I want to start by, by saying thank you. Thank you for Liberty View Baptist Church, for your kindness and generosity. The back of our car is absolutely full of goodies, of things we'll take to Brazil and we'll use. Thank you so much from our hearts. It's really moments like this that when the goings get tough, we'll be reminded that there's people who love us, who are praying for us. And uh, from our hearts, thank you for your kindness and generosity. As I mentioned on, on the video, we have the command, if you're here this, mo- this evening and you're saved, we have the command in Acts. We, we both talked about the book of Acts, but Acts is known as the book of transition. And we, in the book of Acts, are commanded to, Christ commanded the disciples to go into all the world. Actually, in the end of Matthew, you find it. In Mark, you find it. In the Gospel, you see Christ telling the disciples to go into all the world, and to preach the gospel to every creature. Just as back in those days, if you're here this evening, you're a Christian, you have the responsibility to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. But the question this this morning, I'm still in the morning clock, (laughs) the question this this evening is, how can we fulfill the Great Commission? The that's that's a name that we call the the really the the great commission is really the great commandment that God has given to the Christians to reach the world with the gospel. Well, the first step we can take, young people, is you can tell the people at your school about Christ. At your workplace, you can tell your lost co-worker about Christ. That's our responsibility. You see, why did God just not save us and leave us or, and take us straight to heaven? Because He has a purpose for us. And we're supposed to shine and be a light and tell the lost about Christ. But the question is, when it goes to overseas, when it comes to Brazil, when it comes to Albany, New York, you can't be at your workplace and at Albany, New York at the same time, right? This is yes, this is no. <laughs> no. <laughs> we can only be at one place at one time. But we have the command to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, that's where I want you to take your Bibles and real b- briefly tonight, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. You know, I stand here in front of you as a direct result of what we call faith promise giving. If you look at this card here, it says, My promise. You know, giving like this is a commitment between you and the Lord. It's just saying, Lord, whatever you want me to give, I will give. That's why it's included, well, we include the word faith. Faith, what is faith? Trusting God. Trust in God, really. So you commit to God, say, Lord, by faith, even though, though I might not see where it's coming from, but by faith, I'm going to give this so that people in Brazil or people in Africa or people in New York can hear the gospel. Really, we see the concept here in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we're going to read verse 1 through 5. We read, Moreover, brethren... We do, um, we do you to wit the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Verse 5, And this they did not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. You see, this church... For the sake of time, we're not going to take deep, uh, 
dive too deep into the church of Macedonia, but if you look and you research, these people were poor. And here in this passage, we see really the concept of faith, promise, giving, the promise of giving. First of all, tonight, let's take a look at their condition. The church was facing opposition. Notice here in this passage, um, the grace of God um, and the church of Macedonia, verse 2, how that in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. So really the idea there of the riches of their liberality <laughs> really what they were willing to give. So this church, they were facing persecution. The extent of persecution that we face here in the States cannot compare to what some Christians face overseas. Right. I was just with, uh, a couple weeks back, I was with a pastor, and he was a pastor in Jordan. And another pastor in Sudan. Wow. That's all I have to say. We know not what it means to be persecuted for the cause of Christ. More than ever before, I saw statistics that, that says that right now, the persecution of Christians is higher than it's ever been in I don't know how many years. You see, this church was getting persecuted. They were under affliction. Yet, we see that they gave their condition, the persecution. Sometimes I have to get at myself for being such a weak Christian. In a country where we have all the liberties to give out a gospel tract or to witness boldly for Christ or to preach Christ, yet we cower behind the skirt of the American dream. We cower behind the skirt of prosperity. The church, these churches that were in Macedonia, in their affliction, in their persecution, they weren't worried about themselves, but they were worried about providing for Paul's need, as we saw here. Their poverty. First of all, under their condition, their, po uh, their persecution. Secondly, their poverty. The Bible describes their poverty as deep poverty. I know we might not have very wealthy people here, but compared to a lot of the world, we as Americans, or if we live in the States, we have a lot more than the rest of the world does. But these people, they didn't give from how much they had, but they gave out of their deep poverty. So that tells me, Pastor, really giving is not a matter of if you can or cannot. Giving to missions is a matter of will or, or will not. So how does that apply to you and me? Well, really... And I'm not, you're like, oh, you're a missionary. It's easy for you to preach because that's how you live. Well, my wife and I, we give to missions just like you do. Because we realize that we have a responsibility to reach the whole world with the gospel. Amen. And how do Amen. we do that? By being faithful. By, no, I can't go to Brazil or no, I can't go to China. But that missionary can, so I'm going to help him get there. <laughs> have you ever thought of this? Imagine getting one day in heaven. And you meet somebody who has been impacted because you said no to that latte or because you said no to an upgrade on your car. I'm not pre preaching prosperity gospel. That's not what I'm... But I'm saying that, you see, it's really investing now what is temporal so that in eternity <laughs> you can forever enjoy that. That's what it's all about. 
It's not about if you can give a hundred or two hundred or three hundred dollars. That's not what it's about. <laughs> it's about exercising faith and fulfilling the Great Commission. You see this church here, <laughs> great trials of, the pl- of, of affliction, the abundance of their... <laughs> it's interesting. Although they were in great trials and afflictions. Notice what the Bible says. The abundance of their joy. Isn't that like counter... You know, well, they're getting afflicted, but yet they're joyful. Ladies and gentlemen, the best place you can be is in the center of God's will. Amen. There is joy there. If you're here this evening and you're not saved or you're trying to get to heaven by doing, you need to get saved. The Bible says that it's God's will that, n- that nobody should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of Christ. The best place to be, if you want real joy, is to be in the center of God's will. Their condition, their persecution, their poverty. Secondly, their charity. Notice verse 3. For to their power I bear record, yea, beyond their power, they were willing of them they were willing of themselves praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift. So what, what is the Bible saying here? Well, really beyond really what logically they could give, they gave. And I believe the Lord rewarded them greatly. Their love, really that, that shows love. You see, love, how is love demonstrated? By action. Let's say if I love Um, let's say you love fishing how is that evident? by fishing rods and going fishing let's say if I love for the ladies here I love Hobby Lobby (laughs) how is that evident? by going Hobby Lobby right? for these Christians their love was evident through what? through giving Notice, they gave beyond themselves. Their charity. One of the greatest demonstrations of love is when Christ, the great creator of the universe, died in that tree and displayed the ultimate picture of love. He gave Himself to save you and me. Again, if you're here tonight and you're not saved... Christ died to save you. Maybe you've been told all your life that the way to heaven is by you got to do this and do that. Listen, if you could do to get to heaven, then Christ would not have had to die. You see, the Bible says, for we all have sinned and we come short of God's glory. No matter how hard you try, trying is not going to get you to heaven. The Bible says salvation is by grace through faith. Salvation is a gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. If you're here, Christ demonstrated His love by dying on the cross for you. Christians, we must demonstrate our love by being willing to sacrifice for the cause of Christ. Christ was constantly giving of Himself to people. In fact, John 15, 13, the Bible says, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Their condition, they were under affliction, their poverty, their persecution, their charity, they were willing to give. And one thing I know about Liberty View Baptist Church is you all are giving people. Really, my wife and I were so humbled by your kindness to us and you all just gave so much. The next, I'm going to have to figure out how to bring that back to North Carolina, but thank you so much. Really, that's an evidence of charity, of love, selfless love. Physically, these people here, these churches in Macedonia, 
they provided money for the brethren in Jerusalem. That's really what, what the context here is dealing. But spiritually, they provided, I think, spiritual support for the brothers in Jerusalem, praying for them and encouraging them. Church, I want to encourage you, pray for your missionaries. They're in the front line. It's lonely. Trust me, I've been there. Pastor, you've been there. Pray for your missionaries. Be a friend to them. So how does that apply to you? Are we demonstrating our love by giving? Not just giving monetarily, but, but of giving our time to the things of the Lord. Of giving of our sweat and service to the work of the Lord. Thirdly, their consecration. It's interesting, but really this is why they were willing to, no matter what they were going through, they were willing to give to a, a, the needy church of Jerusalem. It's because, I really believe it's because of this, because they were willing first to give themselves to the Lord. Notice with me their consecration in verse 5. And this they did not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. That is consecration. I believe that Liberty View Baptist Church can have a huge impact in their community if the born again believers are willing to give themselves to the Lord and to the work of the Lord. You see, this is not Pastor David Wild's church. Amen. The, it's God's church. Amen. The cause of Christ is beyond <laughs> maybe, an in, maybe a difference I may have with my fellow brother in Christ. We must consecrate and give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Their condition, their charity, their consecration. They selflessly gave themselves. Are we willing to give? Our willingness to give will show our consecration to Christ. So how does this apply to you and me as I close? This church, they didn't have much. They were going under persecution. Yet that didn't affect their love for Christ and for the cause of Christ. So church, I challenge you. Would you just say, Lord, what would you have me give? I'm willing. I want to show my love. Well, really, I want to show God's love to the people of Brazil. I want to show God's love to the people of Albany, New York. I want to show God's love to the people in Africa. That's what it's about. It's not about a money-making thing. That's not what it's about. It's about fulfilling the Great Commission where you can't be. So with that said, I close. Let's close in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. Help us to demonstrate our love for you. In Jesus' name, amen.